Hello everyone, the 3.7 update has been out and it's one of those filler type of patches. There's no new characters or regions, thus everyone is playing other games or taking a break from Genshin overall. So things have been pretty slow, there's not much going on in terms of Genshin, but a way I found to keep things exciting in times like these is trying non-meta teams. Playing these sort of teams is one of my favorite things to do because it's fun to try units that I haven't built or play very little of. This keeps the repeated things we do fun and interesting which goes a long way in times like these. Also it's just really satisfying to find a team that an unpopular character fits very well in and deals damage or performs as a meta character would. Without further ado, let's talk about the teams I have for you today, the first being Burjan Diluc. Burjan Diluc in my eyes is one of the most slept on teams in Genshin, after testing it and seeing how strong it is, I thought it would pick up in the beginning of Dendro or Sumeru, yet surprisingly it hasn't, so now at the end of the Dendro era, I'm gonna vouch for it one last time. First off, Burgeon is really strong. Combining the damage you deal from the reaction, as well as the attacks from your team, your DPS is actually quite high. This is especially true if you're able to group enemies somewhat close so they all take damage from the cores. Burgeon is a great way to use Diluc in high level content if Vape or Melt Diluc didn't feel right for you. Beyond this, Diluc performs very well as a Burgeon enabler. He's easily one of the top units for Burgeon, and in some cases probably the best. There's many reasons why he's so good for this reaction. Right off the bat, the multiple uses of his skill are really useful. You can use his skills in quick succession and blow up cores efficiently. Next with his burst, it's another pyro attack that can be used to blow up cores. A useful aspect of it is that it has a fairly wide AoE, so when you use it, you'll be hitting essentially all the cores on the field. So long as enemies are close to these cores, no core will go to waste. The burst has a great upside of giving Diluc Pyro Infusion. This is incredibly useful as you can trigger Burgeon very frequently and very easily for a long time without having to worry about energy or cooldowns. With this infusion you'll also be able to trigger other reactions like burning as well as vaporize for some extra damage. Last but not least, since Diluc is a claimer character, he's able to make use of some really good EM weapons. The best being the Mailed Flower from the recent Mondstadt event which grants the most EM out of all claimers. But if you don't have this claimer, there are still really good free to play options you can use, like the Rain Slasher, the Blood Taken Greatsword, and there's also the Aquamarine if you wish on the weapon banner. As for the units to play alongside Diluc, some of you are probably wondering if Nahida is needed for this team, and no, she's not. She makes this team quite a bit better, but you can still get great results results with other Dendro units, like the Traveler for example, albeit with a little more caution. To play this team optimally, I found the best rotation is to first apply Zhongli shield, then using Nahida's skill on all enemies and then her burst, followed by Xingqiu's skill on burst. His skill will create a lot of cores, with which for Diluc, you want to use his burst to blow them all up and gain infusion. Now, simply normal attack, and after 3-4 to four normals, use his skill or simply whenever a core appears. I've covered everything but Diluc's artifacts, so let's talk about that. Diluc can use many sets, so to clear any confusion, I'll rank them from strongest to weakest. First is 4 Lost Paradise, followed by 4 Gilded Dreams, 4 Crimson Witch, and any 2 sets with 80 EM. For the artifact main stats, build Diluc triple EM and level him up as much as you can to deal the most virgin damage. The final tip is to use the Sacrificial Sword on Ching Cho. Any ER sword is the best for him, but since his skill produces so many cores so quickly, if you have the Sack Sword especially in high refinements, using it can lead to more damage. Let's now talk about the second team, of which is dedicated to all of you Eula Wanters, if she ever releases. In truth, this team can be used for any physical DPS. This team works wonderfully with Jean, but I highly recommend this for Eula since as strong as she is, a big thing that holds her back is her teams. Superconduct is quite weak, yet you can fix this by adding other characters to better the reaction. This is Taser Conduct Eula. This team revolves around performing superconduct to buff Eula's attacks and performing other reactions, namely Taser, to increase the damage you deal, Freeze which makes fighting enemies much easier, and last but not least, Shatter which further adds to your damage. Like always, you can use the characters you see fit, but I found this team to be the best. Firstly, since Eula will be on field for majority of the time and right in front of enemies normal attacking, she will need a character to keep her alive, which Beto does. 
Beidou's burst will reduce incoming damage while also dealing good electro damage for superconduct. Xingqiu does the same but dealing hydro damage. By combining these two, Yula can have up to 66% damage reduction, which is very significant, and for some added comfort, Xingqiu's skill will heal Yula after its duration is complete. Lastly for Rosaria, she is a flex bot, but she's really good in this team since she gives energy to Yula, increases crit rate, and at C6, she further decreases physical resistance. Onto characters builds, everyone is built normally, but I recommend giving at least two characters for Voni's weapons, preferably Beidou and Xingqiu, and in some cases even Rosaria. This is mainly for Beidou and Eula since they will struggle with energy, and it is important to get their burst back often. Let's get into the rotation, which starts off by just using skills and bursts. First, Beidou's, Xingqiu's, and Rosaria's. This is done so Beidou can gain energy and get her burst back every rotation. After all this, switch to Eula, cast her skill, her burst, and then her hold skill. Now normal attack as much as possible. If her burst isn't ready when you switch to her, just normal attack with her all the same. I also want to mention the Eula Raiden variation of this team. I must say this team is really fun, combining both the gameplay of Eula and Raiden feels refreshing, since it doesn't feel like there's just one DPS in the team, but two. I will say though, I probably prefer the original version of this team. This specific team is better suited for the Abyss since Eula Raiden is one of Eula's strongest teams. With Raiden alongside Eula, Raiden makes triggering Superconduct very easy through her skill, which has a much longer duration than Beidou's Burst and no energy restrictions. But most importantly, Raiden batteries Eula very well while dealing high damage in the process. The next team has to do with an old character I bet you all have, was probably C12, Chung Yoon. Now I haven't heard anyone talk about Chung Yoon in so long, I can't lie I almost forgot he existed but don't let this sway you away from him. Chung Yoon has always been a solid or pretty decent character, but in this team which is Sunfire Chung Yoon, he can deal some pretty crazy damage. This is all thanks to the Sunfire combo of Jean and Benny. The two work amazingly together as combining their bursts on top of each other creates a field that constantly applies pyro to enemies and greatly buffs character damage. Because of this, Chong Yoon is able to deal very high damage. His burst, which is his main source of damage, acts as a nuke. All of his swords will melt and deal massive damage, and with high investment unlike my Chong Yoon, you can deal even more damage. Chong Yoon's skill will also melt enemies, and beyond Chong Yoon, Jin will be dealing tons of damage too. Since her burst will be constantly swirling pyro, if you build her purely EM, which I recommend to do, Jin's swirl can at times deal around 20k, which really adds to the DPS of this team. Rosario will also be dealing a lot of damage while fitting into this team really well. This is why I chose her, though you can use other cryos like Shen He for example. This team is exceptional when it comes to bosses or single target enemies, but for multiple enemies it does fall off a bit since the team's main source of damage lasts for around 7 seconds and in a small area, so not all enemies in the field will be hit by this. But if you can group enemies together, this team becomes much better for multiple enemies. To build Chang Yun for this team, you want to focus on EM and a bit of attack. As such, build EM sands on Chang Yun for the most melt damage or switch to an attack sands if you like this then a cryo damage goblet and a crit circlet. For the actual set, you can combine the two sets of Blizzard Strayer, No Bless, and any two sets that increase attack or EM. For Emblem Fate or the full Gilded Dream set are two other strong options. Moving on to weapons, you can give any of the EM weapons I mentioned in the first team. You can also give Chong Yoon any 5 star claymore and they'll work great on him, aside from the Skyward Pride which isn't as good as the other 5 star claymores. In addition to these, 4 star attack percentage or crit weapons can be really good as well. Some notable claimers are the Luxurious Sea Lord, the Lithic Blade, or the Serpent Spine. Speaking of Serpent Spine, let's slither to the team rotation. I'm sorry. First, start off by using Rosaria's skill and then Jean's skill to decrease the enemy's cryo resistance. I use Benny's burst and skill and then Jean's burst right after. This will cause all enemies to be affected by Pyro, so cast both Chang Yoon's burst and skill. After Chang Yoon, cast Rosaria's skill on burst. At this stage of the rotation, just normal attack until Bennett's burst disappears, and regain character's energy for the next rotation. Once Benny's burst is ready to be used, repeat the rotation. With the last three teams covered, we move on to the last team which you probably haven't thought of, and maybe even think is dumb but I promise you it's good, it is a Burning Tainari. Burning is probably the most neglected Dendro reaction, and for good reason. 
Amidst all the other reactions, burning is not able to hold on its own. If we were able to trigger burning on one enemy, your DPS results would be very low. But if you perform it on multiple enemies with strong characters, burning is significantly stronger since that same burning damage extends to all enemies for a long time in addition to high personal damage, which this team does. It's great at juggling all enemies with Pyro, thanks to Kazuha and Bennett, and grouping them together for some high hits by Shungling and Tainari. Two honorable mentions for this team is Venti instead of Kazuha. Venti would make this team turn fight into recruit difficulty, since all enemies would be stuck together in the air where you can effortlessly shoot them with Tainari's bows. Last is Tainari himself, you can use another denture unit instead of him, in fact I'd probably use I'll hate them in this team but I don't have him yet, I'll hate them would solve the short playtime Tainari has in each rotation, though this isn't exactly a bad thing since with this you can keep enemies grouped very frequently thanks to Kazuha's skill. Before I get into the rotation, let's quickly go over the unit's builds. With Kazuha, I recommend to use the Sack Sword if you have its high refinements. This will allow Kazuha to use his burst every rotation, which you need to do, and it'll allow him to use his skill twice. This is really useful for reapplying burning and buffing pyro, but it's also a great way to maintain the control of the battle. For Tainari, you should use for Deepwood since he will be the only one able to use this set, and the Dendro res it gives to enemies is so high that it beats using any other set instead. Of it. Now for the rotation, cast Benny's burst and skill, Kazuha's burst and skill, and this time Shang Ling's skill and burst. Once this is done, use Tainari's skill and fire his charge attacks thrice. Follow this up by using his burst, which when that's done, use Kazuha's skill again. Now regain Benny's burst and repeat this from the top. And that is all the non-meta teams I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and let me know what do you think of these teams. Do you think they're strong or weak? And what are the non-meta teams you use for the Abyss or Outer World? Also, how are you coping with Genshin's slow patch? Are you trying other games in the meantime or are you sticking with Genshin? Please let me know this in the comments. And with that, I'm going to end the video. Thank you all for watching. Take care and thank you once again.